And, and what I wanted to challenge you to do with this year that we're leaving and we're going into a new year, but be very careful that you remember it right. Your memory is a mess. You know that. You've been memorizing all the wrong stuff. You've been memorizing all the things that went wrong. That's why you're miserable because of your memory. I'm going to come to this side see if I can find anybody, anybody at all at the praise party at Elevation Church. If you would start recalling to your mind all of the ways he's made, all of the promises he's kept, all of the things he's carried you through, all of the valleys that he walked you out of, if you would remember, you would rejoice. If you would remember, you would open your mouth and praise God. That's your I recall it to my mind. I call it. I call it. Master your memory. Don't let your memory master you. Paul said, I'm not chained to this floor. I'm chained to the faithfulness of God. He was faithful this morning, and he's faithful at midnight. I'm not memorizing my pain this year. So I want to get you in the right atmosphere tonight because you're sitting there at Rock Hill, you're sitting there at Lake Norman, and you're going over and over and over and over again. I saw something on my phone. It was called a memory movie. Did you know that? You can do that now. If you have an iPhone, you can go on and set all the memories that you want and make a video out of it. Well, I'm going to make a movie about this year, but I'm going to skip some scenes. And it's not that they didn't happen. It's just that I'm not putting them on my plot line. It's my memory, and I've been remembering it wrong. That's why you keep messing up relationships. You only remember the one time that they said that rude thing to you. 27,942 times they were nice to you. You remember the one. Manage your memory. Edit your movie. Paul had mastered his memory. Here's how I know. Not only did he sing the hymn at midnight, which indicates the fact that he knew that God was going to deliver him, because maybe God had done it before. Maybe once you beat a lion, beat a bear, Goliath ain't so bad. Maybe it's not so scary to go through the Jordan when you've been across the Red Sea. Just memorize, 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 memorize. Muscle memory, muscle memory. Did you know that the same way you can develop muscle memory in the weight room, you can develop miracle memory in your spiritual life? I got all night. I got all night. I got all night. So, so, so Paul, 10 years later, is writing to the Philippian church. Remember I told you that he wrote a letter to them, Philippians, and he's, he's talking to them, and he says… Uh, this is Philippians 1, verse 3. I don't have it memorized, so I need it on the screen. He's, <laughs> he's writing to the church that was founded when he went to a woman named Lydia, and he ended up going to prison. And yet, when he goes to speak to them a decade later about what happened, what he has to say about it in his memory, he says, You know what? I thank my God every time I remember you. Some of us, if we're writing this, we say, Every time I remember you, I think of that, that night I spent when they beat my back. Every time I, every time, Paul said, no, no, no. When I remember you, I remember the outcome, not the opposition. The way I respond has to do with the way I remember. I thank my God every time I remember you. In all my prayers with you, I thank my God. I remember you with joy when I remember. I don't remember the pain. I remember the purpose. He doesn't even mention the prison, because by this time, the purpose is so big that that night in prison seems small. It's just one night. Memorize. I was talking to Eric this morning. I said, "Do you remember what happened when they when they sang praises to God?" He said, "Yeah, the prison doors opened and everyone's chains came off." Because I've preached that before now. I mean, any preacher can preach that. 
if you're trying to preach the Bible and you can't preach on this passage, you should definitely sharpen your uh, other skills and resume out there. But he, he said, um, so yeah, and the prison doors flew open. Right. And, and, I, and I asked him, I said, and then what? He didn't know. He didn't remember. He remembers his fantasy football lineup, but he didn't remember. Come on, that's my best friend. I'm just having a good time. I've been friends since high school. But that's 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 you know what I want to happen next in the story. And I know I don't get to write the Bible. And Luke is writing this, right? He's recording it under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. What happened? Yeah. And uh, it would be great to end the sermon on what happened at midnight because they praised him at midnight. Chains came loose, which represents freedom. Doors flew open, which represents escape. But what happens next? Well, I know what I do if I'm Paul. It's not hard. First, you got to memorize, and then you got to mobilize. <laughs> so I'm out. <laughs> Because God answered my prayer, and that's what the earthquake was for. And there's the door open, and look in the Lord, good. I'm out. How many of you are with me? You're out. But remember how you always had that one kid in your class that would raise their hand at the end of class, and the teacher forgot to take up the homework assignment. But that one kid, that one kid. Would raise his hand and say, Ah, Miss Smith, are you gonna take off our math homework? Because I totally did it, Miss Smith. <laughs> look, look, watch this. I love finding the church people who aren't used to having fun in church. <laughs> Paul, Paul is that kid. Because the doors fly open, right? This is amazing. We're out. God is good. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Great is I thank the But watch. Watch. Paul, Paul is that kid. Uh, the jailer woke up, verse 27. And when he saw the prison doors open, he said, Oh crap, tried to kill himself. He said it in Greek. Because um, he thought the prisoners had escaped. Well, of course he did, because that's what you do. But apparently, Paul is better at preaching than he is at prison breaks. <laughs> Paul messes up the whole thing, because what I want to see next, I either want Shawshank Redemption, Andy Dufresne crawling through the sewer, coming out like this in the rain on TBS, or I want Paul with his chain. <laughs> Maybe I watched one too many Quentin Tarantino movies. I shouldn't confess that on the stage, but I want to see some action. The doors are open. Earthquake. This is anticlimactic. I'm just warning you. Because we always preach about what happened at midnight. But the miracle isn't what happened at midnight. The miracle is what happened after midnight. It was what Paul had put in his heart before midnight that gave him the hymn to sing when midnight hit. And the way that he went through the midnight is what gave him the credence and the validity to have a message to share. The way that you go through your trials, the way that you go through your dark seasons, the way that you go through the confusing times and the crucible of the trial, the testing of your faith. But Paul, Paul baffles me, man, because the doors fly open. And instead of running, Paul shouted, Shut up, man. Look what he shouted. Don't harm yourself. We. Miss <laughs> Man. It's anticlimactic, right? Why were you singing and praying if you were just going to stand in the same place with the doors open? But maybe Paul had the kind of faith 
that doesn't only give you the way of escape, because that's what a lot of us really want when we talk about a new year, a new beginning. What we really want is a new situation. I, I want out. I want out. God, give me out. Give me, give me out of this debt. But what, what if God wants to get in your budget? I'm just trying to preach something helpful because I don't want you to watch the dot disappear, go home, wake up with a headache, and think nothing happened. No, it's not what happens at midnight. It's what happened after midnight. When Paul said, I know you were expecting me to get out, but I didn't come to Philippi to get out. I came to Philippi to get the gospel in. Paul wasn't trying to get out. He was trying to bring the word of God in. I five three people tell him, bring it in. 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 I'm not just trying to get out of a sad situation. I'm bringing in my joy. I'm not just trying to get out of a hard situation. I'm bringing in God's strength. Bring it in. Bring it in. Bring it in. Bring it in. I'm bringing it in. I'm not getting out. I came to Philippi to preach, and now I've got a captive audience. Don't kill yourself, Mr. Prison Guard. I know you were supposed to be guarding me, but what happens when the one who was a hostage becomes the host? And Paul turns around and says, Don't worry about it. I got good news for you. Paul saw an opportunity. Paul didn't see an open prison door. He saw an open door for the gospel. I want to declare over your life, there is an open door of opportunity. Hey, thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to this channel so you don't miss a single video or live stream. And share this video with a friend. And don't forget, you can join me live every Sunday. Thanks again for watching.